Now let's shift our focus to this structure that we see here. This is the heart as we have already guessed covered by the fibrous pericardium and we have split it open in several places. And we can see that the fibrous pericardium is tough and leathery. Fibrous pericardium is roughly cone shaped. Apex of the cone fuses with the tunica adventitia of the great vessel, more specifically the arch of aorta at the junction between the ascending and the arch of aorta and we can see that here we have split it here. And the base of the cone is the fibrous pericardium which gets attached to the central tendon of the diaphragm and this was the place. And to show you exactly where, I am going to bring the thoracic cavity here and this was the location where it was attached to the central tendon of the diaphragm. And here it is fused by means of ligament which we can see remnant of that is the pericardiophrenic ligament. So this was where the base was located and it was sitting on this. Now I am going to remove this out. Once we split it open, we can see the pericardial cavity. Under the fibrous pericardium, lining the inner surface of the fibrous pericardium here is the parietal layer of the serous pericardium. And lining the surface of the heart is the visceral layer of the serous pericardium which is also referred to as epicardium. And we can see it is laden with fat. So therefore this is the pericardial cavity which we have highly exaggerated. There are two portions of the pericardial cavity which require special mention and they are called pericardial sinuses. First one is this one where my hand has gone in. It has gone obliquely up and to the right. This is called the oblique pericardial sinus. This is a dead end. The dead end being formed by the four pulmonary veins and the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava opening into the heart. This is the oblique pericardial sinus and this forms the posterior relation of the base of the heart, namely the left atrium. The next sinus is the transverse pericardial sinus, which is surgically very important. And I'm putting my finger in the transverse pericardial sinus right now. And if you notice very carefully, in front of my finger is located the arch of aorta. And ideally, even the pulmonary trunk should be located in front. And behind my finger is located the superior vena cava. So this is referred to as the transverse pericardial sinus. The transverse pericardial sinus embryologically is the remnant of the space between the arterial end of the heart and the venous end of the heart when the heart tube hold it. This is an MR angiogram to show the transverse pericardial sinus between the aorta and the SVC. This transverse pericardial sinus is used by cardiothoracic surgeons to cannulate the aorta and the superior vena cava prior to open heart surgery in order to connect these great vessels to the heart lung machine. That is the surgical importance of this transverse pericardial sinus. This is a schematic diagram to show the heart lung machine blood draining from the venous end to the arterial end. And if I were to put my finger further lower down in the transverse pericardial sinus, it stops at one place. That is the lower limit of the transverse pericardial sinus which is bounded by again the base of the heart formed by the left atrium. So these are the two cavities. We need to mention a few other points. This pericardial cavity can get filled with abnormal fluid. Normally it contains very small amount of fluid to allow frictionless movement. But if there's excessive collection, it is referred to as pericardial effusion. Or it can have collection of blood when it is known as hemopericardium. It can have collection of air which is known as pneumopericardium. This is a plain chest x-ray to show pneumopericardium indicated by the arrows. If there is collection of fluid, we need to tap it and that is called pericardial synthesis. And how do we do it? We go slightly to the left of the xiphoid process and we go in this region. We go to the left between the fifth and the left interco sixth intercostal space where my finger is located. This region of the pericardium is referred to as the bare area of the pericardium. The word bare is a relative term. It means that this portion of the pericardium is in direct contact with the chest wall because the visceral pleura has moved away by virtue of the cardiac notch and the lingular process of the left lung. So therefore we can push the needle here without injuring the pleura. So this is the region where we do a pericardiosynthesis. So that is about the fibrous pericardium. More will follow when we dissect out the heart. And before I go out of this, I just want to draw your attention to this portion here. We can see the remnant of the diaphragm here also. So this was where the inferior or the diaphragmatic surface of the heart was sitting. And we can also see opening of the inferior vena cava, which is highly thrombosed here. It is piercing through the central tendon of the diaphragm and it's entering into the heart. Thank you very much for watching Dr. Sanjay Sanya signing out. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Have a nice day.